That was the hardest race I have ever, ever done. This is the first running of the Valderan 100 by UTMB. Uh, in true UTMB style, the, the start finish line is right next to a little quaint village church. Uh, it's very small, everything is compacted into a few meters. So registration and uh, bib collection are literally 50 meters that way beyond the start finish line. Uh, there is um, an information point just here and then we have the presentation area just in front of me here um, so this is pretty much the hub of all the activity here in Vallea uh, which is where the 100 mile race begins in uh, less than seven hours <laughs> an hour and 20 minutes before race start uh, and uh, I'm just going to hand my bag in so this is a bag that gets uh, picked up at about 100k I think into the race just spare stuff and food and things like that that I might need uh, it's really really hot so we've got to keep cool I'm very nervous really nervous I have to say So this is what you find in UTMB races. We're only four and a half kilometers in. There are so many people that we basically just come to a standstill. And this happens at every UTMB race anywhere in the world. First checkpoint, two hours and six minutes, 800 meters climb, nearly 11 kilometers done. What a view, eh? Look at that. kilometers in and this is the top of the first climb absolutely amazing before the sun goes down so this is the top of mainland Spain this mountain up here Aneto Aneto thank you
Right, six hours and 37 minutes in. So um, this aid station is the third aid station and it closes in about 35 minutes. So we're not, not too far inside the cutoff. We've got a very big long climb now. It's, it's uh, half past midnight, 20 to one in the morning. So I've got some soup and I'm going to get some bread and uh, I won't spend too long in here now. So uh, we've done about 38 kilometres. Just come up a huge climb from the last aid station and then down again. Probably can see the lights behind me and then we're going up again. It's another about another nine kilometers to the next aid station. It's five to three in the morning, so we've been going eight hours, 55 minutes, 38 kilometers. So you can see the morning is just starting to break. Um, we've done 50 kilometers in 11 hours, 55 minutes. So uh, we're well over a quarter of the way there, almost a third of the way there. I don't feel too bad. I'm starting to get a bit tired with these climbs now. We've had some really tough climbs, but we're getting there. Next aid station is about 7k away. Nearly 57 kilometers in. I've got uh, pasta in my bowl. I've got black coffee. Um, I think I think my quads got a bit trashed on the downhill um, into this uh, aid station. This is Bossot. Um, I think it's 55 kilometers officially. I've been here a while now, actually. I, I came in, I've almost been here half an hour, maybe. 13 hours, 29 minutes on the clock. So I better get going shortly, I think. So we are here at uh, Kanyan, 64 kilometers, although I've got 66 on my watch. And uh, we have 5.8 kilometers to the next day session, which is Toran. And then we have the monster climb of the whole run. Seventeen hours fifty-five. We are now on the biggest climb of the race. It's a fifteen hundred metre climb up the side of this mountain. Beautiful blue lake down there. Look, we are seventy-five kilometres in. We are still slogging our way up this 1500 meter climb. We're in the last 300 meters of the climb now. Every time we come across a little stream, we're all throwing ourselves under it to keep cool because it's really hot. So we are um, 20 hours and 24 minutes in to the Val d'Aran 100. We've covered 80 kilometers, so we are halfway. 
That seems amazing that it's only halfway. But there we are. It's more of a long, slow hike than a run, this event. That's pretty fantastic, isn't it? And that's what's uh, calming all the streams and waterfalls down in the valley. Okay, oh, So the previous shot you just saw was uh, taken in the pass between the mountains and uh, that's where it is, right up there. You see that V shape at the top? That's where we've just come down from. Um, 95 kilometres and uh, 25 hours 11 minutes. My quads, I don't know if I've mentioned this, my quads are absolutely shot. So it's very difficult to uh, run downhill. I can run on the flat and uh, I can make my way slowly uphill, but running downhill is really, really painful. And we've still got uh, 75, 65 kilometers to go. But there we are. So the sun's definitely gone in, it'll be getting dark soon. I'm just making my way to the aid station with my drop bag in at 103 kilometres officially. I am very, very tired. I'm rapidly losing patience with this race. So hard. There's still a lot of work to do overnight for the second night. And it looks like I'm going to be finishing between 44 and 48 hours. Uh, so this is where you get your drop bags and basically spend a bit of time getting changed, which I've done already. I've eaten, I've got changed, I'm ready for the night section. Although I'm not really ready, I'm absolutely shattered. Uh, apparently, three over 300 people have withdrawn DNF. It is a beast of a race. Um, that's where you get your food over there. Um, there's hot pasta and things like that if you want it, um, and all the usual sandwiches and fruit and things. Um, and then there's other areas where people are sitting as well. But so many people have withdrawn, there's not many people about, and I'm going to be on my own on the hills tonight, I think. Anyway, let's get going. So 
the sun's coming up. I feel sick. Had enough of this race, still, still uh, 20 miles to go. I, you can't deny that it's, it's really beautiful though, but having been up for two nights now, stomach feeling a bit funny, feet hurting, legs completely trashed, and the gnarliest course you've ever seen in your life. I am not feeling it at the moment. Okay, like an idiot, as I always do, I failed to look at the information correctly. Um, and I thought this aid station was the one with the 12.45 cutoff. It's actually the next one, but we do have three hours to get there and do it. So we've got a little climb, as you can see on the map there, and then 968 meters all the way down. Fingers crossed we can do it. Die thinks we can do it, didn't die? I think we can do it. So good news, we made it to the final aid station which has a cut off time and we made it an hour to spare so um, all we need to do now is have some food, try and sort out how I'm going to stay cool for the final section. There's one aid station in the middle of the final section, there's a big climb and then a little climb and then downhill into Vallea for the finish. So this has been standard fare for the past two days. Basically trudging up a mountain very slowly through a forest and then eventually you'll come out into open land and then the mountains or the higher mountains you'll see in the distance. And we've basically done that about four times over the course of this race. But this is the last one, the final climb and then it's down to the finish. Three and a half kilometers to go. There's Vallee down there, but my legs are absolute rock solid. I can hardly move in them. the hardest race I have ever, ever done. I'm just so glad to be back home. Tu se inscribe en tu fue la carrera más dura de su vida. Con el calor que hacía, pero está contentísima, contentísimo de estar aquí en la llegada y tiene su inscripción para el último de hoy en Chamonix. Así que está contentísimo. Bravo, Steven. Chiapo.